And I really believe we're going to hit a worst case scenario, um, meaning credit freeze, no cash available. The stores will be cleaned out from everything that's in there within a matter of hours. Um, people have no idea what the potential to unfold is right in the immediate future. So let's talk a little more about that. A lot of people walk around and they think, oh, we're going to get an inversion. We're going to wait a little while, then the market's going to crash. Well, the market's going to take a hit, but that's not going to be the big one. The big one, and I mean the one that's going to rock the core of the financial world and every corner of the earth, is when we get a snapback moment. Every day, this, the potential rises for a massive sell-off in the debt market. When the debt market sells off, what does that mean? It means yields spike in an uncontrolled fashion. When yields spike in an uncontrolled fashion, what does that do? It puts enormous pressure on the stock market. The stock market has the potential to be cut in half in a matter of days, maybe one day. Um, we don't know where the bottom here is in the stock market, which I want people to understand. There's no bottom here. Uh, at the last meltdown, the Fed stepped in, Dow 6,000. That's when the Fed stepped in. That was not the bottom. That's when the Fed stepped in. We could have been at Dow 2000. If this happens again, and it will, people will go to their bank, go to an ATM, and there will be nothing there. Zero. No cash. No way to move it. No way to get it out. I and mean, most people don't even understand the fractional reserve system, that your cash isn't there anyway. Right. You put $1,000 in the bank. The bank lends out 90% of it. Whatever you see on a digital screen is not really there. Uh, it's an incredible situation, but this is how twisted it is. So there's the big one for you. Right now we're getting a prelude. The prelude of the big one is the yield curve inversion. You always end up with the haves and the have nots, which is the grand plan anyway. Uh, and unfortunately, I think when this thing melts down, what people need to think about in a bigger scale is the, the massive loss of life that's going to accompany that. We've, we've inflated a bubble in debt uh, it looks like a hockey stick. And if you were to look at the shape of a hockey stick and look at the global population, we've riv risen in tandem with that exploding debt. When that debt bubble bursts, millions upon millions of people around the world are going to lose their lives as well. Um, the system will not be able to sustain that many people anymore. Uh, it's a terrible thing. So we have to think of it in a bigger picture, too, uh, what it means for humanity moving forward. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Reluctant Preppers provides educational awareness and commentary only. Opinions expressed do not constitute personalized financial advice. Viewers are encouraged to do their own research and seek qualified personal financial consultation before making investment decisions. Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We never get this guest as often as our viewers would like. This is Gregory Manorino. He is known as the Robin Hood of Wall Street for several reasons. Greg, thanks for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Great to be here. Finally, right? We, we finally got this thing going. We put it's, it together. It's, it's been crazy, but... We're getting it done. Glad this, to be here. Thank you. Today is Monday, August 12, 2019, and we'll probably get this up Wednesday. So people, if you're seeing this Wednesday, uh, it was recorded on Monday. And also, the reason, folks, that Greg is called the Robin Hood of Wall Street is because not only does he offer completely free of cost insight on the markets, as well as free trading tools on his TradersChoice.net uh, web channel, but also he's he's in it for the common sense and the little guy, and he basically tells us how to rip the faces off the markets, meaning take the lies away and see what's really going on behind the scenes, and that's why we love having you here in our corner, Greg. So uh, if you could first maybe kick us off with what you think are the like one or two main things that you think people need to be understanding right now about what's actually going on in the debt and equities markets and in our economies versus we all know what we're being told so don't even, don't even bother with that but what do you think people need to understand about what's actually going on that's most important to their well-being of their families well the, the first thing you just said is the debt market the debt market has been a ticking time bomb for years i've been screaming from rooftops for years that uh, a moment of reckoning was quickly approaching and we are right now 
and I mean this literally, and I'll talk more about it at an inflection point. What do we know? We know that we've had an inverted yield curve for, for quite a while. As a matter of fact, if we want to look at the entire spectrum from the one month to the 30 year, actually, go, let's go back to the federal funds rate, the overnight rate, which is uh, from two to two point uh, two and a quarter a percent. The 30 year right now today is yielding 2.13. Now, the federal funds rate fluctuates from week to week. You can go to the Federal Reserve website and see it. Right now, the federal funds rate is 2.25. So the 30 year is yielding less than the federal funds rate or the overnight rate. Um, this is a big tell uh, in itself, and we'll talk more about this in a moment, uh, that there are monumental problems here uh, coming down the pike. Now, let's talk about more immediate issues. So the mainstream financial channels haven't been getting all upset or investors haven't been getting um, too afraid because they're waiting for one thing to happen. And that is an inversion to occur between the two-year treasury and the 10-year treasury. Right now, the spread between those two, today it hit five basis points. I've been explaining to people forever um, that they need to watch all the spreads, but this one in particular is important here because again, it's the one that Wall Street watches. And why is it so important? And why should it not be ignored? Because it's never, never, been wrong. It has a 100% track record. Every time that we've, that we've had a recession, a depression, a market crash, a market meltdown, it was preceded by a 210 inversion. So again, um, this is something that we cannot ignore. Why is the yield curve doing what it's doing right now? It's very simple. Um, we have an economy that's in free fall. Uh, every metric that you want to look at point, is pointing lower. We're, we keep getting lie after lie after lie about a booming economy. There is no booming economy whatsoever. We have household debt, credit card debt at record highs. We have record store closings all over the United States. Farmers getting their third bailout right now. More bailouts are coming. Uh, we have calls from everyone, um, including the president, for another one, another 1% cut in the federal funds rate. Um, we got a warning to actually, let's back up a minute. It's Peter Navarro running the show, the, the president's econ uh, economic advisor. And the man, in my view, um, doesn't have a, the slightest clue. Unfortunately, the president is following his advice. The president is choosing, along with Navarro's advice, to play the debt game. The debt game is what got us to where we are right now. We are in a crisis, a global debt crisis, and we are in a crisis right here in the United States with regard to debt. Hence what we're witnessing in the yield curve, okay? It's pointing towards, who knows? I mean, I really believe we're gonna hit a worst case scenario, um, meaning credit freeze, no cash available, the stores will be cleaned out from everything that's in there within a matter of hours. Um, people have no idea what the potential to unfold is right in the immediate future. So let's talk a little more about that. So we got this 210 inversion, which we are on the threshold of. The action in the bond market today, I know this isn't going to be out till Wednesday, was epic. We saw volatility in the bond market that you would expect to see in the equity market or the stock market. It's unheard of. You don't see these kinds of things. This morning, the spread between the two to ten, two and ten was just slightly over eight. Midday, it dropped to five. It's unheard of. Uh, so there's panic here in the bond market. Um, this should be a real tell to people. People, what people need to do is not panic themselves. They need to think. They need to think about what does this mean for them. Let's let's say tomorrow, the next day, next week we get a two to 10 inversion. Does that mean that that's the day the stock market is gonna crash? No, it doesn't mean that. Um, what we're gonna end up happening, it, what will end up happening, if history is a guide, uh, and I always like to look at his, history here, um, right. we, there's a lag time. And that lag time can vary. 
in in more normal environments because we've never been here before. This is where no man, no woman has gone before. Uh, it can be several months, up to up to 24 months. I don't think it's going to take that long. Gauging from what we're, the action in the bond market just today alone, I mean, this is just not normal. I, I did not expect to see what I witnessed today. Uh, that volatility in the debt market. Um, again, it's the biggest bubble in the history of the world. We've never seen anything like it on on any any to any measure measure of the imagination. It is beyond belief. Uh, and on the back of that, we've watched housing a housing bubble reappear. We've watched an epic stock market bubble reappear. We're seeing a major on trade, meaning cash is moving out of places it should be going into and into places business being. Um, and all this is going to correct to fair value. And it's going to be so rapid, it's going to take most people by surprise. So this is why people need to think. Don't panic. You think about what what does it mean for your investment portfolio? If you're on the long end of this market, meaning if you're in an, an investment that only makes money when stocks go up, you need to seriously think about how to protect that. And there are many, many ways to it. Uh, people who, even people who have, one K plan have options. They need to talk to the fund manager and find out what's available. All right, it's very simple. If you are on the long end of this market and you've done very well up till now, even though stocks are not at all time highs, we're probably about four and a half percent off an all time high for the Dow, uh, it might be time to start thinking about pulling profits here uh, and either staying in cash or reallocating it into other assets. Again, I've explained to you and everybody else since I don't know, a decade, hard assets is where you need to be. Physical gold, physical silver, more specifically physical silver. I also own platinum, palladium. I, 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 I myself do own real estate. I own artwork. I own uh, vintage instruments. I mean, I, I kind of have a diversified person, and I believe that's the key to a lot of this. But people need to understand now. They need to bet against the debt and become their own central bank. If they haven't done it already, uh, so my message since day one, again, over a decade, uh, they got to do it now. Uh, there's no more time to wait. Don't wait for lower prices on these things. There's no price discovery mechanism behind gold and silver whatsoever anyway. As a matter of fact, we could say there's no price discovery mechanism behind a single asset. The debt market uh, is where every other asset derives value from. Notice the word derives, derives, mm -hmm. derivative. So you can even say that the stock market is a derivative of what's occurred. Stock market as a whole is a derivative as to what's going on here in the, the debt market, which is in the quadrillions, if you add in dollar denominated, all the denom dollar denominated derivatives again associated with the debt. Uh, everything has layers of derivatives under it. It's, a, it's an incredible thing, it's a monster. And no one knows really how toxic the system is, but the system's poisonous. So this is the high level view folks that, that uh, Greg's giving us, and that is when he's talking about the um yield curve uh, nearing an inversion point. Uh, we said to always watch the bond market, the, the trouble will start with, because people ask that very often of guests on our channel, they say, where will we see just before, what's, our, what's a telltale sign that things are really going to go badly? And your, mm -hmm. uh, your um, reminder to us throughout the years has been consistently saying, keep your eye on the bond market because it's much larger and other things uh, are derivatives of it. Mm -hmm. Just so people That's can understand why a long-term bond yielding lower interest rate than a short-term bond indicates troubles ahead. Can you give us kind of like the, the layman's version of why that makes sense? Sure. Well, if you know, people don't want to be holding long-term debt. I mean, it's it's risky. So again, so you end up with this inversion that we're seeing right now. Although, see, here's the, here's the issue that people need to understand. And I don't want people to walk away with the wrong perspective. What we're seeing now with the yield curve inversion is the prelude mm -hmm. for the big one, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of people walk around and they think, oh, we're gonna get an inversion, we're gonna wait a little while, then the market's gonna crash. Well, the market's gonna take a hit, but that's not going to be the big one. The big one, and I mean the one that's gonna rock the core of the financial world and every corner of the earth is when we get a snapback moment. Right now, there is the perceive, perceived safety in holding debt, okay? Hence, cash is flowing into the debt market. When cash goes into the debt market, it suppresses rates. Hence, like quantitative easing, the Fed buys the debt, it pushes rates lower. 
uh, that we get a cut in the federal funds rate. The Fed can't just say, hey, you know what, we're going to keep rates low. No, they have to get cash, print it out of thin air, add it to a digital screen and buy the debt. That's the way it works. So I was probably, and I mean this, one of the first guys to explain this from years ago, that the, there's going to be a moment here when, if you want to think of it as like a bow and arrow, like you're pulling, you're building up uh, like power by pulling back that the, the the string, whatever the heck it's called, you're pulling it back, 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 back. Then all of a sudden it releases, and then all that energy just gets released. You have uh, a, a, like a kinetic ener energy surge from energy that's being built up. So right now what we're witnessing in the debt market is energy that's being built up. And every day that the, the yield curve inverts further, that energy is gaining in, in power. What's going to end up happening, and again, this is not just me now saying, although I was probably the first guy, you got guys like Alan Greenspan, former Fed chair, you got multi-billionaire hedge fund managers who are explaining the potential for this to happen. So we got right now here in the United States a bond market where if you own any type of a debt instrument going from the, the, the one month all the way out to the 30 year, you're, you're actually losing money. You're getting earning an interest, a yield less than the actual rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's theft on a grand scale. This mechanism has been in place for a decade for a reason. It's forced the middle class to subsidize the stock market. It's a very simple concept. All of that cash that would have been going into the, the cash, let's say if we had a normal yield curve or, or, or yields that were higher than the rate of inflation, people would be earning cash on their interest earning accounts. Now they're being robbed blind to support this mechanism. And we're still getting calls to lower the federal funds rate even further. Peter Navarro, 1%. President Trump, 1%. We're getting calls for a week or dollar from, again, Peter Navarro, from the president. I mean, these are all big, fat, ugly negatives. We're already, we've already started to see this opening salvos uh, in a massive currency devaluation just started with China. Now, going back to the bond market. So we have all this energy building up as the yield curve drops. Who in their right mind would want to hold a debt instrument in this environment? There's going to be a run for the door and I mean a run for the door in a rapid fashion at one particular time. So we have uh, uh, every day this, the potential rises for a massive sell-off in the debt market. When the debt market sells off, what does that mean? It means yields spike in an uncontrolled fashion. When yields spike in an uncontrolled fashion, what does that do? It puts enormous pressure on the stock market. The stock market has the potential to be cut in half in a matter of days, maybe one day. Um, we don't know where the bottom here is in the stock market, which I want people to understand. There's no bottom here. Uh, at the last meltdown, the Fed stepped in. Dow 6,000, that's when the Fed stepped in. That was not the bottom. That's when the Fed stepped in. We could have been at Dow 2,000 at one point. We might actually face a moment of Dow 2,000. I want people to understand what that means. So, when, so moving forward here, the the... the the issue with energy building up in the debt market that's going to be released is going to punish everything. You're going to see yield spike in an uncontrolled fashion. You're going to have central banks that are going to try to stop the bleeding. How do they do that? By printing cash out of thin air, adding it to a digital screen, price controls because we can get massive inflation. The dollar is a unit of debt. So you can just see it's all going to implode at the same time. Then people will have no access to their cash, just like last time. What people don't know is in the last meltdown, the Federal Reserve had to resort to massive capital injections just to get the credit market going so businesses would lend to each other. If this happens again, and it will, people will go to their bank, go to an ATM, and there will be nothing there. Zero. No cash. No way to move it. No way to get it out. I and mean, most people don't even understand the fractional reserve system, that your cash isn't there anyway. Right. You put $1,000 in the bank. The bank lends out 90% of it. Whatever you see on a digital screen is not really there. Uh, it's an incredible situation, but this is how twisted it is. So there's the big one for you. Right now we're getting a prelude. The prelude of the big one is the yield curve inversion. And I've been warning of this exact scenario for the better part of a decade. And then once we get that, once that bottoms out, well, I think the potential is great for a massive sell-off, which will, which will decimate uh, the equity market. And I mean, decimate. And again, no one knows where the bottom is. It could be Dow 2000. I want to piggyback right on what you're talking right now. Wall Street Journal put out an article today 
on the U.S. economy section. Fed considers a new tool for a downturn. From Washington, Federal Reserve officials are weighing whether to use a tool that could reduce the risk of a credit crunch in a downturn. The tool is known as countercyclical capital buffer. It allows the Fed to require banks to hold more loss-absorbing capital. So they're talking about putting in those banks that have over $250 billion in assets, including J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Citigroup, uh, requiring them to hold uh, much higher levels of capital in in case of a downturn and it says they're hoping that this will instill greater confidence in people in in, in the market is like oh yeah they're they're inflating the lifeboat and that's going to make the passengers feel more more relaxed on the on the ocean liner it's funny they could they could do whatever they want to if we get a, they could capitalize these banks into oblivion it won't matter if we get a credit cre- credit freeze the cash will not be available anyway so they can they can you know float out stories like this and again we're going to get more quantitative easing it's already been talked about by the president a few months ago um, we had JP Morgan today today uh, come out saying more QE is coming um, everyone knows it's coming uh, who doesn't know the general population the people that don't watch your show have no clue uh, it's the truth uh, thankfully at least the, the people that follow your work understand what's going on. And they have a basic uh, knowledge of, I guess, the markets and what they should be doing moving forward. But again, I think, sadly, we have um, undoubtedly left ourselves vulnerable to a worst case scenario. And it's our leaders. It's our leaders around the world who are allowing their central banks to become not just the lenders of last resort, but the buyers of last resort. The plan is very simple. The plan is, and it's been going on for multiple decades, is world central banks to own as much, as many assets as they possibly can by lending that cash and then saying, well, you now owe us this cash here. Uh, they got us all in a spot where we can't get out of because we all, tra- most of us at least, by and large, transact in their currency. Uh, they own the show. They run everything. Uh, if you transact, if you buy things in dollars or fiat currency, they own you. Um, the only way is to be completely outside the system, which they've made virtually impossible. Um, they don't. Uh, no politician, including the president, wants a cryptocurrency out there. Why? Pushes you outside the system. The Federal Reserve can't control you. It's a very simple concept to understand. Uh, anything outside holding a, a, a central bank issued note will be frowned upon, uh, no matter how good it is. Even gold, even silver. Uh, will be frowned upon because it takes you outside the system. They want you in it, all of them, top down. So that should tell people something. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter what they do. They can, you know, we just passed the stress test. These stress tests are nonsense. Uh, I don't know what they're even meant to do anymore. They're meaningless. Uh, you know, we were being told that bonds would be were rated triple A during the last meltdown. Meanwhile, they 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 should have been mm-hmm. at zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we can't take a word from any anybody. We got to make up our own minds, use our own God-given intellect. Uh, we all have it. So uh, it's it's sad how few people actually use it, and they have to be fist-fed by the politicians, by the talking heads on the mainstream channels, who are going to parade out CEOs and bank uh, big big wigs who are going to tell them everything is fine, uh, including all of our politicians, because it's the people are always the last ones to know. Uh, just like at the end of World War II, the German people thought they were winning the war. They thought they were winning the war uh, be, because that's what be, they were being told. Uh, it's going to be the same situation here. and People are going to be caught completely off guard. And that's the plan because understand what the situation, how it's going to unfold is, you know, there's always going to be that rush out the door. And the, the people, the dumb money, it's called dumb money for a reason. It's that it's it's money that's held by the dumb, the dumbed down because they don't know any better. And the people that are generally managing their money don't know any better either. And so they're always the last ones out the door. And that's the sad, pathetic part of it, because all the smart money gets out first. The massive wealth transfer occurs. And that's it. People be walking around the streets like zombies, not knowing what's going on or what happened to them. Maybe we can roll into some viewers' questions. We've got more than we all have time for, but at least we can hit a few of them. We have a viewer by the name of the Magnificent Zoltar who asks, Many people claim that we are currently in a everything bubble. Can everything be in a bubble at the same time, or is this just a symptom of the global fiat currency? We are in a multiple bubble. It is an everything bubble, but to encompass that, 
we also have to consider that there are inverse bubbles. There are bubbles to the upside and there are inverse bubbles to the downside. What would be an example of that? Very simple, gold and silver. These are in massive, epic inverse bubbles. So yes, the inverse, the, there isn't everything bubble, but you can't think of it in the respect uh, or the perspective that everything is just hyper inflated. There are things that are also massively, and I mean massively, undervalued. Jack Robert asks, what do you think about 15 trillion in negative yielding debt, sovereign debt globally, I assume he means, the future of, and what about the future of negative interest rates? Well, that number that, that was just put out there is um, just the beginning. We're going to see that, uh, uh, we're already seeing this in most of the developed world that's coming here to the United States. We actually have mostly uh, negative yielding debt here in the United States if you base things against inflation. So, I mean, it's all hidden. It's all just kind of there. You just got to know where to look. Um, and you got to ignore all the fake nonsense, the fake data they're throwing at us. But the truth of the matter is, this we haven't seen anything yet here. Let me just go a little further with that. Um, we're about to witness, and I told people weeks and weeks ago that central banks were about to go nuclear. Since that time, we've had a series of world central banks cut rates. Uh, I, I, I said it before it happened, and now you got the mainstream people going, what's going on? Why are central banks all cutting rates? Duh. That's all I have to say. These people can't think for themselves. They can't walk and chew gum at the same time. They get fed the wrong script, and then they don't know what to do. It's, it's an incredible thing. Again, they're not using their own intellect. They're all, they all sold their souls uh, just so, so they can receive a paycheck. Um, it's just it's too stupid to me. But it's just, it should be very obvious to people. We haven't even begun to see the desperate acts uh, that are about to take place to, uh, to attempt to keep this propped up, especially because we are in an election year. So you can expect the level of lies to reach a new record high, too. So bringing it down to the ordinary person, if a family thinks they're going to play it really conservative and really safe and from, from the way that they were taught by their parents or parents' generation, keep, keep your money safe in the bank or something like that, uh, how negative interest rates affect an ordinary family or ordinary uh, earners who have, who have savings? Well, I mean, just look at the bigger picture here. Just like I said before, look, first of all, <laughs> savings. They're getting raw blind. The cash is being used to support the stock market in which the, uh, the the corporate CEOs and the bigwigs of all these corporations and the middle class is sat here, most people, and done nothing, said nothing. Thank God people like you have, have blogs here. We're trying to spread the news. I want people to get out here and make a difference in, in anyone's life, in their own life too, but start thinking about other people. Start blogging, start talking. Because again, what does this mean for the middle class? First of all, there is almost no middle class anymore. We have again, household debt, consumer debt at all time record highs. This is not the way the middle class used to survive. The middle, middle, to be a member of the middle class meant you were able to get by very nicely on one salary, maybe two, uh, no struggling, no burying yourself in debt. We have one in four people now today borrowing from their credit card just to make ends meet. The middle class has been under attack uh, for a long, long time. We've been footing the bill for everything, and we will continue to do that until there is no middle class. The plan is very simple, a two-tier society, an absolute elimination of the middle class, make their lives harder, make them strain. Let me explain something to you, another real quick. If people were not, if these members of the middle class were not buried in debt beyond their eyeballs, uh, and as soon as they start to default on things, and they will, they're gonna immediately fall to the lower rung of society. A two-tier society is well underway. We're pretty much there now. Um, so and I, this is what I'm saying. People in the middle class, if you can see yourself a member of the middle class, you're in a lot of trouble. You are in a lot of trouble moving forward. And it's, it's, it's borderline almost too late to do anything about it. But if you got to start thinking more that down the line, you got to start understanding that number one, when this thing really does melt down, and I'm talking about when we get that snap back in the debt market, there's going to be nowhere to hide. I don't care where you are on this planet Earth, um, because we're going to have throngs of people walking the streets like zombies, uh, you know, trying to survive. If we have a credit freeze, and we will, how is the Federal Reserve going to unfreeze it? By more capital injections? No, the money will be worthless. It won't matter anymore at that particular time. There's gonna be a new system instituted, one that they already have in place, I'm certain it's there. 
uh, and it will not be benefiting anyone. It will always benefit the central banks. They could fix this problem right here and right now. Our president, if he had one cell with, with some guts in it today, would stop playing the debt game. He's playing the stinking debt game being parroted, by, well, being put out there by Navarro, uh, who's, who, like I said, I have no no nice feelings for this man because I don't think he has a clue about what he's doing. And he's grossly misleading the president. He's grossly misleading the people because we're following uh, uh, the, the rest of the world down the rat hole of debt. We have a debt crisis. You can't fix a, a crisis situation by adding more of the actual element to the crisis that caused it to begin with. And the dollar is a unit of debt. It's an unbacked liability being dispersed by a bankrupt government, I guess, the Fed is part of the government, they run the show, all part of the military industrial complex. But, um, you know, there's not going to be nowhere to hide here uh, in, in, in a worst case scenario, even in a not so worst case scenario, things can get so bad um, that we can end up in, 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 I think we will end up in a situation worse than the Great Depression. Um, because we have much more people. People don't care about each other anymore. I leave off every single Friday in my videos. I say, love each other, care about each other, and be charitable. I don't say these things to make myself feel good. I say these things because I want people to embrace those concepts, because when this all comes down, we're all going to need each other. You mentioned uh, in passing a little while ago about uh, China devaluing its currency. E. Jackson asks, currency wars about to start? Where do you see it going? <laughs> Abysmally worse. I mean, we're about to see, uh, we're on the threshold, I think, of a major global currency devaluation. Uh, there's a lot of people that are worried about it here in the United States, rightly so. Uh, we've heard several times about how uh, the, the strong dollar is not good for our country. Uh, the president himself has said he doesn't like the strong dollar. What does that mean? They're going to make effort to weaken the dollar so everything goes up in price. But what does this do? It's a boost to the stock market because when anything is priced in a weaker dollar, well, what happens? It takes more weaker dollars to buy anything, even shares of stock. So you end up with a higher number in the, in the, in the market, although it's not real in terms of purchasing power. I mean, this thing is so big, man, I tell you. It blows my mind thinking about it. But yeah, we're, we're, we're really in, um, we're going to start to see a lot more desperate acts from central banks, from political leaders, um, from those who know no other way than to just expand hmm. the debt. And that's the pathetic part of it all. Because the first world leader, and I was hoping it was going to be our president, to, uh, to take the opposite side of that trade is going to win. Number one, revalue gold at least 10 times higher than it is right now. It's been done before. They revalued gold many, many times in history. And then back the currency with a fraction of gold. Right there, we win. We take power away from the central banks. Central banks' power exists in one thing, the ability to issue debt. The more debt they issue, the stronger they become. If we take some of that power away, even a fraction of it, by backing the dollar with a little bit of gold, we win. We all win. But no one knows any better. And the president's getting very bad advice from a very, very terrible uh, economist, uh, Peter Navarro, everyone should write to this guy and tell him to, to uh, resign and or at least write to the president and tell him to stop listening to this guy. Uh, related to that, Carl Johnston uh, asks, what are the main ways to bet against the debt? I'm just trying to learn and I hear Greg say that a lot, but I don't know how to. Mm, very simple. Hold a hard asset. Uh, you know, turn some of that, those, those pieces of paper with numbers printed on them into a real asset, into uh, physical gold, physical silver. I don't care what they're going to do to it in the derivatives market. How, what kind of a twisted environment are we in where the hard asset derives value from the derivative? It's usually the opposite way. I mean, let's talk about Microsoft stock. Microsoft stock doesn't derive value from what's happening in the derivative market. No, the derivatives derive value from what's happening in, in Microsoft stock. But today, that system has been flipped upside down so they can rig the markets. And that's what, exactly what they're doing. But we're going to end up in a, pro in a situation, again, where it's risk off. Right now, it's risk on, risk on, risk on. The 210 inversion is going to start to be, I believe, the, uh, the war cry to uh, start switching from risk on to risk off. And that's where we're going to get, um, again, along with massive currency devaluation, which is coming down the pike, more rate cuts, quantitative easing, whatever the hell the Fed wants to do with recapitalizing banks, which won't matter at all if we end up in a credit freeze, which we will. Um, that's how you become your own central bank, betting against the debt by holding a hard asset, gold, silver. 
couple of people, maybe about three different people here asking about holding the stock of uh, gold and silver mining companies, asset mining companies. They're concerned because they like the idea of being able to hold somebody who is actually a source of real assets, but they're concerned because it's stocks, and if stocks are going to get beaten down in a collapse, it seems like it's a contradiction there. What's your view of the timing or the virtues of holding gold uh, and silver mining stocks? It's a no-brainer to me. If I had the choice between holding a hard asset in my hand or a mining stock, what 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 do you think I would choose? I think you're a hard asset guy. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm not even going to go there. Um, I, 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 and that's kind of a situation. I would try to. I would avoid equity exposure um, in a big way right now, uh, and and watch that bond market. Watch that yield curve. Uh, this is the this is the time where people need to minimize risk, and I mean minimize risk in with risk exposure to stocks until we get a clear signal from the debt market um that's what people need to do minimize risk you talked about what it would look like with a freeze up of the credit market um i can hardly pronounce this person's name rl 8088 npr says there are so many voices telling us what's coming and all have different opinions i need some insight on what life will be like for the average joe Daily transactions, how do we pay for gas, groceries, and the like? Or will everything just stop, and for how long? It'll just stop completely. If there's a credit freeze and people, there'll, there'll be runs on the banks. The banks will lock you out, of course. There'll be no cash to be had. Um, you know, you know, for a while, you know, this is going to sound kind of strange, but I think people need to hold a little bit of cash uh, mm-hmm. in their hand. Like, you know, I'm not saying huge amounts of it, but in the event of a credit freeze, um, and you know stores aren't going to know what to do, they're going to want to have some kind of cash. And the people that have cash for, for that short period of time, until whatever new system is put into place, or whoever they unfreeze the credit markets, having some cash in hand is going to be um, something they should they should have. So. Um, Although you want to be out of the dollar, you have to understand that we do transact in these things. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, or, or fortunately, however, you should be holding some cash in this environment. This is kind of a different one. Silver Silo says, if the markets can survive into the next Democratic administration, will a cocktail of universal basic income, $15 minimum wage, free college tuition, and Medicare for all create enough demand for money printing that the Fed can successfully reinflate the bubbles? In other words, could quantitative easing for social programs have the same profitable effect on the stock market that quantitative easing had when delivered to banks? No, absolutely not. The dollar is not infinitely divisible. Um, they can say what they want to say. Uh, all this is doing is flooding the. Uh, all this would do is uh, add, add more, more, more debt, more credit uh, into a system that melted down for that very reason. There has to be. There has to be some kind of an understanding that we can't print our way or redistribute redistribute wealth uh, into prosperity for everyone. It just doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work. I don't care what people might think. I don't care what they might believe. If they have any understanding of how the financial systems work, they would, it would be very clear to them that you can't do this. Uh, it's been tried. Don't work. Uh, it never does. It always ends. You always end up with the haves and the have-nots, which is the grand plan anyway. Uh, and unfortunately, I think when this thing melts down, what people need to think about in a bigger scale is the the massive loss of life that's going to accompany that we've we've inflated a bubble in debt uh, it looks like a hockey stick and if you were to look at the shape of a hockey stick and look at the global population we've riv- risen in tandem with that exploding debt when that debt bubble bursts millions upon millions of people around the world are going to lose their lives as well um, the system will not be able to sustain that many people anymore uh, it's a terrible thing. So we have to think of it in a bigger picture too, uh, what it means for humanity moving forward. There's a question here about the gold backing of the dollar from Barbara Schneier who says, Greg, if you put the dollar on a gold standard fractionally, as you've suggested, before the debt is eliminated, how, how will that debt be paid? I believe, if you have to, I believe you have to eliminate the debt first so you aren't stuck with trillions of debt, fiat dollars that has to be paid back in gold-backed dollars. You can't eliminate the debt. Can't, debt cannot be eliminated. Everything, there's too many things that are connected to the debt. The dollar is a unit of debt. If they all of a sudden said, okay, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to forgive half the debt. The dollar loses half of its value. 
you, you, you just can't do it. It can't be done. They have every angle covered. Um, there's no way to think your way out. It has to be a shock to the system. Um, and again, the debt just cannot go away. Uh, there's going to have to be some kind of uh, mechanism where people who are holders of debt, uh, pension plans, a lot of them are linked to debt, they're going to have to be willing to take the loss. Uh, and people are not going to be willing to take the loss. They're going to scream and yell and kick. Uh, you know, there's all there's so many things linked. I mean, the dollar itself is a unit of debt. That's all it is. People seem to forget that. And a person to ask a question like that does not understand what it would mean for the dollars in their pocket. God forbid if they had a, 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 a pension plan or something linked to the debt, too. All of a sudden, they're destitute. They're left completely wiped out. And that's why it has it, it, it has to be restructured in a way where uh, losses are taken, unfortunately, by people that were guaranteed that they wouldn't. Mm. Um, and a lot of people, the vast majority, are not going to be willing to take that, that those losses. Rajat Sharma asks, on, on behalf of people who are living in apartments, is it safe to have a mixed portion of your metal stored at home and in vaults like Brinks if you live in a rental property? What's stopping the vaults from denying you delivery if needed? Nothing. I mean, people got to decide on what they want to do with regard to that. Greg, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, answer all of our viewers' questions. We've got more than we'll have time to get into, so we'll have to get you back on another time. And one more hit from you as far as where people can find more of your work if they want to follow you on a daily basis. Traderschoice.net. Everything is free. Everything is free. Go enjoy it. Download everything. Uh, my publications are free. I have a free chat room. Enjoy it. Get, get in there with like-minded people. Um, and, and just like I said, I'm going to leave you off again with this. Love each other. Care about each other. Be charitable. We all need each other. Period. The end. And that's it. Thank you, Greg and Arena, for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Thanks for having me. It seems so hard to order. Who can I trust and how do I even start? Oh, you just go to sdbullion.com slash rp, pick out whatever gold or silver you want, add it to your cart, you can check out, and it's on its way. And they're A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Wow, it's that easy? Your first ounce of silver is at spot price, and you get free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com slash rp. After I order gold or silver, how can I trust I'm going to get it? And I don't want everybody to know that I'm ordering gold and silver. Oh, it's okay. It's fully insured. It's trackable. And you have to sign for it, so nobody else is going to get it but you. And it comes discreetly packaged. If you order a small amount, like maybe gold, it'll probably come in a box that looks something like this. Okay. And if you order a large amount, maybe like silver, uh -oh. uh. it'll come in a box that looks something like this. Wow. But it doesn't say gold or silver on there. It might say something industrial or something else like that, but nobody's going to know what you ordered. Oh, that's great to know. Your first ounce of silver is at spot price, and you get free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com slash rp. <laughs> If I own gold or silver, how will I ever be able to spend it? Oh sure, well consider good times or bad times. Like in good times, you can sell it back to the same place you bought it from. sdbullion.com slash rp will buy it back at the best price guaranteed on the internet. You can take it to a local coin shop and get cash in your hand, completely anonymous. Some people you know may be willing to take gold or silver coins in exchange for goods or services. Now in bad times, when things have really fallen apart, time after time in history people have found that in hard times, Gold and silver really does come through as something that people recognize as value even after everything else has failed. Your first ounce of silver is at spot price and you get free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com slash rp. What if gold or silver drop in price after I order it? Well, everything fluctuates with time, but nothing is held up longer and better than gold and silver throughout all the changes that have happened in history. 
Your first ounce of silver is at spot price, and you get free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com slash rp. What good does gold do me anyway? I can't use it for anything. Well, I think I found a form you might appreciate. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow, I can wear that just about anywhere. And you can take it with you through airport security and across borders. It's small and compact and lightweight, and you can even hand it down through generations. Your first ounce of silver is at spot price, and you get free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com slash rp. Hey, Reluctant Preppers. If you haven't heard, we've already started our monthly one ounce U.S. Silver Eagle thank you gift to one active Patreon subscriber each month, signed by your host, Dunnigan Kaiser. And you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctantpreppers.